OK, continue the build-up to the All-Ireland Senior Hurling Final this coming Sunday, Kilkenny against Limerick, and I'm in the familiar surrounds of Langton's Hotel on John Street in Kilkenny. Delighted to be joined by Owen Larkin, eight times an All-Ireland champion, I think I'm right in saying. Yeah. A couple of All-Stars thrown in there to the mix as well. Yeah, two, two All-Stars, yeah, one hurler of the year, so uh, we got a good bit of success in my career and not as great to, great to get, I suppose. And when you think now that the lads are going, probably most of the lads are going for their first All-Ireland, mm. we have money to know in be eight years this year if we don't go over the line Sunday so um, look hopefully they can do it That's some famine when you think about it like for, for a county like Kilkenny eight years it's mad it is a famine um, like the hotel rent at the moment I mean we were just saying it the way and the, the memories and stories I was chatting to him in Langton when I came in the door and uh, some parties here after all Ireland wins I'd imagine Unbelievable yeah the Monday night we used to come back here on a Monday night and be, the disco would be gone and um We'd, we'd have a couple of pints and be able to relax, kind of, I suppose, on the, on the Monday night, more so than the Sunday night because it's banquet and all that kind of stuff. But, uh, look, we had great times here. Um, and in fairness to the staff and AM and all Langton's, you know, we, come, we used to come here for the grub and I think they still do after training as well. You know, they looked after us so well and it was great to come back here then and enjoy mm. celebrations with them. But, look, to just sit down and have a pint on a Monday night, I suppose, after winning an All-Ireland, it's brilliant, it's brilliant and you see all the fans are outside then as well and they're having a great time as well. You know, it, it wouldn't be a busy night in Kilkenny on a Monday night but always after an All-Ireland final it's always packed here so great stories, great times, you know, we brilliant, brilliant times down here. That's probably the thing, like the, the even the likes of that player of the year in 08 wasn't it? And, yeah. Or the hurler of the year and you've got the All-Stars, like those sort of things you probably don't really care about at the time of course you'd care about them but yeah. it's only when you're retired and you're sitting over a bar stool or having a coffee with your mates or something that you can actually probably look back and appreciate it maybe well that's it because you don't kind of you don't celebrate celebrate those things although we always had great nights at the all-stars you don't celebrate the same way as you celebrate a, a team success um when you know you know you're after giving everything and the lad beside is after giving everything he knows what you've given and you know what he's given and you can just sit down and relax and you know, take a deep breath and kind of enjoy the, the all the hard work has paid off, you know, and lucky enough we were, well I was only involved in two losses and, you know, they're, they're tough to take and you don't want to ha have that kind of memories but look, I suppose everyone goes through it as well and, that, you know, that's why you have to just enjoy it. when you do win, you have to really, really enjoy it and, you know, thank God we had we had a group of lads that were able to enjoy it and, you know, we'd have good, ta good times for about a week after and you'd be sore enough and trying to trying to come back to normal uh, for about three weeks after but it was well worth it I, it was funny because I, I remember re reading your book camouflage before and I, I think you touched on this in the book or it could have been an interview after the book but your first final loss of those two being in 2010 mm -hmm. and and obviously that being gut-wrenching but you, you kind of get used to it I think you talked about Killian Buckley maybe in 2016 yeah. and he wasn't even fit to, to chat to his girlfriend after the match he was he was in despair so is, I guess it's one of those things a little bit of experience you realise that well maybe first of all there are more important things in life but also you, you'll be back the following year do you know yeah well I suppose you can't take it for granted that yeah. you'll be back the following year but look in Kilkenny as you said it's, it's like a bit of a famine now that we haven't won the all Ireland in so long um, and you know we're there thereabouts every year you know in the all Ireland last year um, and you, you know you, I suppose you expect to be there thereabouts every year but, but that's it, you just have to put things in perspective, you know, my first All-Ireland loss was 2010, you know, I thought the world was going to end, but then in 2016, you know, still devastated that we lost it, but just appreciating that, you know, it was a tough year and probably just came up against a stronger, better Tipperary team on the day, and you just have to accept it for what it is, you know, you can't, I suppose we all love to win and we want to win all the time, but I suppose that's part of sport and team sport in general that, you know, you have to take the losses with the wins as well. Uh, when you're around Kilkenny and, and especially around the city, like the, you always hear the murmurings of the village and James Stevens and all that, that goes on down there. Like, it's such a brilliant club. And, um, like, where does that 05 All Ireland club title rank for you? It, like, it's obviously unbelievable to win All Ireland titles in the, in the black and amber, but to do it with your club mates must have been a, a special one. Ah, oh yeah, it was. Look, it's, it's certainly up there, if not top of the pile. Um, you know, we had, we had gone 23 years without winning a county final up to 04 and, you know, I suppose we never dreamed that we'd be able to go on and uh, win the Leinster title and then in all Ireland. We just took it game by game and, you know, we seemed to get better as the year went on. Um, and like I said, we never dreamed that we'd get there. It was 
really just get, trying to get the county final success and try and get back on the road again because we had good players and we had good teams over the years and just couldn't get over the line and when we eventually got over the line then you know Adrian Fine was the manager at the time he said look we'll give Leinster a go and once we got over Leinster then we were playing uh, Northern Champions with Donovan Rossa in the semi-final so we fancied our chances against them and like Atten Ray in the final were hugely experienced at that level um, they, they were after winning a couple of all errands but I think we just went in with no fear you know we had, we had got what we wanted out of the year and we could go out and express ourselves and if that took us over the line so be it and eventually it did so it was amazing like it was it was brilliant to it was brilliant to do with your club because you know as you get older and you realise it's so hard to get out with Kilkenny mm. you know we only got out with Kilkenny then twice after that uh, and, and didn't manage to get um to the All-Ireland or, or win another All-Ireland so you appreciate how hard it actually is to do it and then you can look back on it and say look, it was a brilliant time for the club I think you'd hit 9 points off the 19 against Athenry in that final as well so not a bad not a bad showing on a final day either um, like you'd have been an interesting case growing up in that I suppose you're, you're a dual player which isn't all that common in, in Kilkenny and also am I right in saying you started off as, as a goalkeeper in, in the hurler you certainly would have dabbed your hand in it yeah I dabbled in it a small bit I would have played in goal say with Jackie Tyrrell's age which would have been a year older than me so I would have played in goal under 16 I think and minor and halfway through the minor uh, the minor league I think I think we were in league final league semi-final or league final uh, against Ballyhill I think and I dropped the ball came in and I went to catch it and dropped it into the net and um, we ended up getting beaten by a pint. So after that, then I said, <laughs> I don't want to play in goal anymore. So I went to the manager who was Jackie Turns' father at the time and I told him I don't want to play in goal anymore. And he said, look, your, your place won't be guaranteed. And I said, well, that's grand, I'll fight for me place. And I think that was kind of a, a turning point in my career because like, uh, I would have been a decent hurler growing up, but wasn't making kind of county setups or anything like that. And I think uh, him kind of saying that to me probably flick the switch in my head that you know I was going to have to work for anything I got uh, and that's what I done then after that you know I just tried to work as hard as I could in my game and my men mentality and all that kind of stuff and it you know it served me good and you're one of the I guess when you're in Kilkenny you invariably start talking about uh, Kieran's College and you're one of these lads who came out of this unbelievable pipeline like when you see the, the list of names uh, I don't know how they have space on the walls for all the photographs and trophies because not, it's... There's not too many photos of me in Kerr's College now, I'd say. Because um, I left school in third year. I, I, didn't, I wasn't on a college's team or anything like that. Now, I hurled. I probably would have played in goal in Kieran's all we, the way up. Were you handed a hurl in first year? Like, when you're walking in the door, is it, there you go, is it getting the Carrie Potter almost? No, it's, it's actually not. It's just... I think it's just... I remember going in, into first year, but, you know, you would have been passing Kieran's when you weren't in there and you'd see all the lads with hurls and things going into mm. school so it's just a natural thing then that you bring your hurl to Kieran's College and at that time the the outside alleys were there as well so we used to go in early in the mornings and play a bit of wall ball in there and it's the same at break time and lunch time then as well you'd be racing back mm. I used to go home for lunch but you'd be racing back to get a bit of wall ball in before you you go back in and then obviously you know got onto the teams and things like that you know I, I suppose when you see the hurlers that have gone before and were on teams and won all errands and all that it's just a success breeding school, I suppose, um, for want of a better word. Uh, and and but like, you know, the education is important there as well. You know, they pride themselves on, on good education as well. Uh, there's obviously a lot of talk this week about uh, the Kenny four in a row from 06 to 09 because, of course, Kenny are trying to stop Limerick doing the same this weekend. Um, I mean, it must have been something special being part of that team, and especially I think it was Tip in the final in 09 maybe to, to secure it, and you have those. Lake Olds from from Shefflin and and Comerford to secure it, but it, like to do what only I think Cork had done maybe in the forties beforehand must have been a special feeling. Yeah, it was unbelievable, and like for long periods in that game, it didn't look like it was going to happen. Um, you know, I think there was so much made of the three in a row, and you know, with the performance we gave then again in in 08 against Waterford, I think that was a huge weight off our shoulders. But we probably took a right off the ball a small bit then the following year because we had the three in a row. Um, and didn't probably play to to our potential in that final. Although you know Tip were very good, but look, we had to, I think we had huge mental strength and huge experience going into that final. And I think that's probably probably what got us over the line. Now some will probably argue it was probably a questionable penalty, but <laughs> look, uh, I suppose if you went to, if you went back over all the years and all the games, you know there's questionable decisions in every game. So you know you could question every result. But um, look, you know. 
we got the chance and we took it and that's the way I look at it and it was brilliant it was a brilliant feeling afterwards and because we knew I'd say we knew we were never going to get that chance again you know and we were just glad that, that we t- took it that day um, and I guess like Brian Cody like when he resigned last year the, the everyone was, was, was wondering what's next and Derek Ling has clearly stepped in and, and stepped up to the plate as well um, and look Cody was had the reputation as the t- tough taskmaster and he'd have to drop lads and bring lads in um, were you surprised that he that he ultimately I, I guess stopped last year or was it just you know, I guess a feeling that this is just the end of the of that era yeah I was surprised but I understood as well he had been there so long um, I got a couple of phone calls saying, you know, uh, Brian Cody's going to step down. And I said, no, I couldn't imagine it, lads. If he was going to do it, it would have been straight after the All Ireland final. And, you know, he wouldn't let any speculation go. Mm. And then, obviously, we got the word. But, look, he, he was a fantastic servant, you know, to give 23 or 24 years of his life to Kilkenny Hurling. And I know what's involved as a player and as a manager, it's probably more. Um, so, like, he gave his whole life to it. And, you know, obviously, he deserves a break. and deserves great credit for what he gave to Kilkenny but look he's back involved with our own club up there again this year so and even last year like when he when he retired he came on board for the last uh, probably month or two of the club championship as well with the senior selectors so like hurling is his life and you know I suppose we all knew he was going to get back involved because that's just what he does you know he just loves it but look like you said Derek is after just taken to it like a duck to water um, you know I'd know Derek personally, you know, I've played him and all that, and he wouldn't be, I suppose, as a taskmaster like uh, like Brian Cody. Now, I don't know what he's like as a manager, but certainly um, he's taken taken it on board and done a fantastic job and got the lads in a really good place going into the All Ireland final. Albeit probably not playing brilliantly, but you know, steady building and hopefully the best is to come this weekend. The, the the Larkin name it's funny like the, it's just everywhere and steeped in in, in Kilkenny hurling history like you look at the, the your family members even Paddy four wins I think back in the in the thirties you had Phil Fan Larkin as well with five All Irelands in the sixteen seventies uh, Philly then I guess it was the second cousin of yours I think it came around came along in the in the noughties and um, it must have just been bred into you as a kid that this was this was the sport you were going to play I, I guess it wasn't forced upon you but yeah. it's definitely encouraged I'd imagine. Yeah, well, it's encouraged, obviously, and definitely not forced, but I think, I suppose, when I was growing up, I was growing up watching Philly um, playing and training with the club and all that kind of stuff, and you just want to emulate that, then, you know, I think that drives you on because you have the same name and you feel nearly a sense of responsibility to, then to carry on that name, and, and that's just the way it was. We just rolled from there then, and obviously, I grew up a bit then, and I got to play with Philly, obviously, in 2004 and five and uh, six as well I think so um, it was great like it was great to get on the same team because he would have always been the standout kind of hurler for our club when I was growing up and you know you go to matches and he'd be starring in matches and you always wanted to get the chance to play to play with him then and then obviously to win and to win a club all Ireland and a couple of county titles then with him it was brilliant but look it was, I suppose it was just a sense of um, pride I suppose that I, could, that I was able to keep on the family name on this weekend, then Owen, um, <clears throat> look, it's a it's a tough one to call, uh, and I genuinely believe that that you know Limerick, I guess the last few years have been very dominant, but this mm-hmm. season it's I, I think before the semi final they hadn't won a game by, by more than two points, yeah. um, so I guess that gap has been closed. How do you how do you see the game playing out? Yeah, look, obviously Limerick are going to be favourites, and rightly so. I think uh, they've done nothing to, I suppose, they've done nothing to say they shouldn't be favourites. But albeit, I don't think they've been as good as they have been in previous years. And I think Kilkenny, I think Kilkenny, like I said, they are just slowly building. You know, haven't been probably as good as they had been last year up to now. Um, you know, and I and I think there is a big performance in them, and they're going to need that. And I think they will need possibly Limerick to be off slightly, uh, and that can happen. You know, they're going for four in a row. Mentally, it can be, uh, it can be a small bit weak after that. But look. I think the impact off the bench is going to be crucial. Mm. You know, we di- I don't think we had enough of an impact last year, and I think we're going to have to have more this year. Um, the team has changed around. Keen Kenny played if, played in the final last year, was taken off at half time, and he's been coming on now and making an impact when the game opens mm. up. So, uh, and obviously all the rest of the lads, Killian Buckley and Richie Hogan and Parik Welsh and Walter Walsh and all these lads. So, I think we have more of an impact off the bench this year, and I think that's going to be crucial coming down the home straight. 
uh, and even the likes of Owen Cody and TJ Reid, like TJ has been just like reeling in the ears. Like I think yeah, wasn't the last in the semi final course taking the all time championship top scoring ranks, which is no surprise to anyone. But yeah. he's just a supremo, isn't he? Ah, he's brilliant. Look, and I suppose I was one of the lads that was questioning him at the start of the year. You know, I, I think he was turning 36. Um, you know, would he be able to keep going? But sure, you know, the man just lives and breeds fitness and hurling and all that kind of stuff. And you know, probably is not not as we'll say prolific as he has been over the last couple of years. But look, you know, did we really expect that he was going to be at 36? But he's still doing a phenomenal job for the team. Uh, and, and obviously Owen Cody then as well probably hasn't had the year you know mm. that he would have expected or that he had last year but had a really really good semi-final now and like I said with the team you know hopefully they're, they're saving the best to last and hopefully he's saving the best to last as well because I think we'll need a big game out of him as well on Sunday Limerick have had to kind of do a little bit of moving around with, with Declan Hannan's absence the last day and, and remains to be seen if he'll be around this weekend um, I guess they're planning without him possibly um, but, but that that Limerick forward line even like Gillan has been unbelievable this year how, how do you how do you deal with him who picks him up in, in your view yeah I've been thinking about it and I'm kind of changing my mind uh, over and back over the last couple of years I've been thinking about look the obvious one probably is uh, is Hugh Lawler but I, I'm thinking then Mikey Butler and Seamus Flanagan you know is there a kind of a, a height difference there so maybe I'm going Mikey Butler onto onto Aaron Gillan and maybe Hugh Lawler onto Seamus Flanagan and Look, I, I think that's I think they have to pick the two of them up. Mm. Um, I don't think you can you can leave the two of them unmarked, uh, and I think that's probably the way it will go. And maybe if it's not working, maybe uh, change it, change it around. But look, I think if Kilkenny are to have any chance, this has to work. Mm. You know, they have to get the matchups right, uh, and even the matchups out the field. You know, Tom Morrissey, um, Gerard Hegarty. I think they need to go man mark most of the forwards. You know, and and tr- and hope it works because it, it will need to work. You know, Garrod Hegarty caused a lot of problems uh, for Kilkenny last year. You know, I think he got a lot of scores from wing forward, and just one, just one memory sticks in my mind. He was out under the Cusick stand, I think, in oceans of space, gathering the ball and just slapping it over the bar. I don't think that can happen. Mm. You know, but look, it's going to be fascinating to see what way the, uh, Derek and the lads uh, do their man marking jobs. But I do think, you know, Aaron Glenn and definitely Seamus Flanagan have to be marked. Finally, on how are you calling it? I know um, it's not an easy one, but uh, and especially when your county's involved. But how do you see it going? Yeah, look, like I said, I'm hoping Kilkenny are seven the, the best to last. And um, but look, Limerick are going to be fair as. But I think if we have saved the best to last and we get the impact out that I expect off the bench, I think we can pull it off. I'm hoping we can, and I, I'd say Kilkenny by one or two. Lovely. Well, listen, best of luck and uh, enjoy the final on Sunday. Cheers. Thanks, Sean.